Hello and welcome to episode 95 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is June 2nd, and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. So, well, actually, both Robert and Goran cannot make it today. So it's just me talking with our special guest, um, Christian Lechner. I guess most of you know Christian from his um, My News Rep series that he started uh, quite a long time ago, actually. He's an MVP, and in his weekly format, um, he shares content, links, information on yeah, uh, Microsoft, SAP, and I think you, you call it the twilight zone in between. So today we will talk about his new format going forward, and Christian brought us also some other cool stuff and, and, and topics. Mm, if you are an SAP developer, you probably have heard about um, Kima. Um, Christian will show us how to work with Kima, leverage some some cool um, Azure services in, in between. And yeah, let, let, let's see what he has uh, um, uh, prepared for us. But as always, um, before we hand over to Christian, um, let's quickly take a look at some of the content from this week. And actually, this week it's, it's very, very light. Um, I, I only have very uh, few topics. Obviously, um, with Build, there were a lot of announcements last week. And there's a lot of content that was announced, and um, now I'm slowly digesting um, some of the content there. And one interesting thing um, is Microsoft Entra. Well, actually, I don't know if, you, if it's pronounced Entra, but I, I, I think so. So Entra is basically bringing together a lot of um, existing services that we have. So for example, like Azure Active Directory, but it also enhances and introduces new topics, um, like here, this cloud infrastructure entitlement management, and that's pretty interesting because it's really um, cross-cloud. So it's not only focused on Azure, but it really um, also um, looks at um, GCP, AWS, and, and, and other scenarios, and to really have one single place, basically, where you can um, yeah, manage entitlements. Similarly, this um, Entra Verif Verified IDs goes in, the, in a direction where you have decentralized identities. And I think with with all of these tools that we are um, or bringing together here under under Microsoft Entra, um, we are yeah acknowledging obviously that there's not only Azure, but there are, there are a lot of other um, clouds out there. A lot of customers are using um, multi-cloud scenarios. I mean, look at SAP obviously, and um, with the business technology platform, or also with other areas, it's it's really multi-cloud, so that customers can. Um, leverage, uh, yeah, the the hyperscaler of choice. We have lots of different um, user IDs, so so not only Azure Active Directory to to manage your office or whatever instances, but you have lots of others. And with Microsoft Entra, um, we are we are trying to address and and um, yeah uh, yeah ad address some of these issues there. Um, there's also a more detailed um, blog post available that really outlines um, um, the different topics. So, so talking about what is Entra, then di um, doing a deep dive on um, the Azure Active Directory component, um, doing a deep dive on, uh, uh, where's the other thing here, the um, permission management and also the um, verified ID. So I think this is something that we'll hear more and more about in the future. But I thought, um, especially also in the context of SAP, this can be something that is um, really, really interesting. The other thing that I wanted to highlight, and that's because um, I am engaged um, with a few customers and partners um, in these scenarios, um, we have announced um, the Azure Communication Services, or actually uh, Azure Communication Services have been around for, for quite some time, but there were some additional new announcements during build, and um, also some GA um, announcements. And the, the, the cool thing for, on, for, for these Azure Communication Services is actually that they are the foundation also for Teams, which means using Azure Communication Services, you can now create your own chat client, your own um, voice client, that um, not only allows you to um, connect and interact with each other. So, so if, if you build your own um, application, that not only this application can work with each other and, and um, use voice and chat and, and whatever functionalities, but it also integrates with the overall Teams environment. So, so think of a scenario um, where you could, for example, have an SAP Fiori application. Um, where you um, use the Azure Communication Services to enrich SAP Fiori we, with um, chat capabilities. So um, if another user also has this Fiori app, they, they can chat with each other. But then if you have a third party, for example, and this third party doesn't have Fiori, but it, it has Teams, then now the three of you can all chat 
um, using the same protocols and just using different user interfaces. And I think this is something where I see a lot of potential to just make a lot of um, SAP, but also obviously non SAP applications more collaborative and, and integrating them into the overall Teams collaboration framework, so to say. So with these um, very short, quick um, news, again, Robert and, and Goran are also not here. Um, that's it, what, what I had um, for, for this week, which actually is a perfect segue because um, in the past, um, my um, regular routine on the weekend actually was to listen to a fantastic po po um, podcast from, um, from Christian, where he um, talks a lot about um, a lot of fantastic information and news that he found for SAP, for Microsoft, and again, this this twilight in between. But before I talk about this, maybe Christian, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself and um, what you're doing um, at SAP, obviously. Um, maybe about your role as an MVP um, for, for, for Microsoft. Um, and yeah, and then let's take a look at the My News Wrap and Kima. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So first of all, Thanks very much for, for having me here. Um, as you already said, my name is Christian. Um, I'm working now for SAP for, um, it's exactly one year now, oh, as cool. of today. Um, Congratulations, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, started, I started in the SAP ecosystem a long time ago, so 2005, I think I, I started with classic lab of development and then evolved a bit in architectural roles and so on. Um, and around 2000, I'm not quite sure, 2018, 19-ish, um, well, I was working still as a partner and I started to, um, yeah, think about SAP and Microsoft being kind of, um, yeah, simulated by the SAP Embrace announcement. Mm -hmm. And starting there, I, I tried to, to build up a, a unit that focuses exactly on that one with a little bit of a different center of gravity than the usual SAP on Azure podcast has. So, you're focusing on SAP on Azure a lot. There are a lot of other topics that you cover, but that's kind of your center of gravity. Mm -hmm. I'm from more from the application development, so I, I wouldn't say I hate infrastructure, but I don't want to <laughs> have too much to do with it. Um, so, so I wanted to combine more or less the, the higher level services of mm -hmm. Microsoft with um, SAP, and there is happening a lot in both areas. Um, and uh, well, that. On the one hand side comprises um, BTP, especially with Kima, as you already said, <clears throat> and on the other hand, um, the, the Microsoft ecosystem. And I kind of wrapped my head around how to, well, to digest all that stuff, how to um, have it in a somewhere structured way. You can do Twitter bookmarks, which basically work out not <laughs> um uh, so so i i thought about how can i how can i digest it for myself and in a second step might that also be something that the whole ecosystem would like to have i mean it's it's not the usual case that you have a lot of folks doing sap and azure yeah a lot but there there are overlaps and that was kind of the the birth of my news rep i really have to to look up when that started um i think it's was in 2020 yeah it was at the end of 2020 um, where where I started with really collecting the information in, in a structured way. Um, there have been some restructures in between, um, but I always focused on the SAP side with um, cloud, so, so from a technological perspective. Then on the Microsoft side with um, the stuff that I fell in love with on Microsoft side, which is serverless, namely Azure Functions. That scope broadened a bit in the meantime. And then, of course, the, the world in between the Twilight Zone, between SAP and Microsoft, where the magic happens, where you can combine both things. I think especially for the, the, the whole serverless area, that's, I think, where you also are. So the MVPs, um, the um, most valuable professionals, um, yep. are um, focused on certain topics, obviously. So there are MVPs for, for data, there are MVPs for um, infrastructure and I think your focus area, as you said, is the the whole serverless area there. Yeah, yeah. So, so the official area where where you get rewarded. So there are different areas where you get rewarded. The official area is Azure because there is no okay. no more fine grained um, uh, distinction on the award level. Um, okay. But of course, every MVP has some 
some focus areas. So there, there are a lot of uh, folks doing stuff in the Kubernetes area, of course. Mm -hmm. And now with, with Azure Container Apps, they, they are also happily jumping on the train. Um, and my, my part was really on the, the serverless part where I also uh, supported the, the Azure Functions University, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is a great format for getting uh, free learning on um, Azure Functions, by, founded by Mark Duker, so also an Azure MVP. That is really great. And I'm also supporting now the BIT project, um, which is also a, a, a non-GAF US um, thingy that um, offers uh, serverless boot camps for, for students. And there is a new um, session starting, I think, in, in two weeks, where I'm also mentoring folks there with Thanks. getting started with Azure Functions. And, and that was kind of the, the entry door to um, the MVP area. Cool. So, so we'll, we'll definitely also put the links um, to the Azure um, Function University and, and the other topics um, in, in the show notes. That, that would be great, yeah. Um, yeah, and with, with I also focused, as I said, on, on, the, on the SAP side of the house, so with, with Kima, which is from my, my personal perspective, um, one of the most promising offerings mm -hmm. um, on BTP. Now, I have to be really cautious because now, since one year, I'm in SAP, so um, all is great <laughs> what SAP does, of course. Um, um, but but I'm I I also did a little video series on learning Kima, mm -hmm. and that I think was getting some attention, and that then also uh, led to to starting with um, SAP one year ago. Um, now I'm in the um, SAP BTP Foundation area in the technology office as as an um, development architect. So mm -hmm. I'm basically thinking about architectural things there. Perfect. Um, yeah, and with the manuscript, I mean, I didn't stop that. So um, it's now it it's running for two years now, or nearly two years. It's it's not yet a uh, 95 episode, so. Um, I, ah, but you're you close are behind. Ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm close behind, but but I I think I made more vacation than you. Well, we are three people. That, that's also uh, a huge uh, difference, uh, obviously. So we load true. balance a lot. Yeah, it's it's uh, for me. It's I'm a single point of view. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we um, come back to the infrastructure topic. SAP on Azure load balancing is really important. As a yeah, serverless yeah. guy, you don't care about that. I I, I sometimes scale to zero, and then there is a code start. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> Um, that's true. Um, so, so now with the manuscript, I thought about um, yeah bringing things down in a structured way, and I think I succeeded to some extent. And okay. as you said, the the manuscript was something that um, has basically three pillars. So one is on on GitHub. Perhaps I can I can shortly share the mm -hmm. stuff. Um, let's do that. So let's rearrange things a bit, and you should see now the GitHub repository. Yeah. Um, which is my news rep. I hope it's it's large enough. Yeah, yeah um, perfect. And what you see is there a little uh, blah blah what it's all about, um, and you will find all the episodes linked here. And um, let's jump into to anyone. Um, you will then get some some outline. So. There are the second two pillars, which is the uh, YouTube video and basically the audio stream that that you referenced before um, that I think simply drag out of YouTube. That's maybe not perfect from from a user experience perspective because you don't see me pointing around, but I think it's okay. And then I have the the um, SAP universe side where I have um, a lot of different topics. Now more focusing on Kima, to be honest. The Microsoft side, of course, with uh, serverless, and this is one of the the older um, additions because this has now grown a lot. Um, because and, yeah. I have DevOps in there in GitHub. I'm a big fan of of GitHub um, and all the the ecosystem around that. And I have, of course, due to the fact that Kima is kind of um, one topic that I'm working with, um, Kubernetes, mm -hmm. which is which then gets fuzzy because Kubernetes is uh, everything and there is some some Azure specific flavors or some Azure specific offerings with respect to AKS. Um, there is some generic stuff and, and yeah, I simply put it in there um, 
of course, the, the serverless Kubernetes Azure Container Apps, I, I think I like them very much um, because they, they take a, a lot of stuff away from the Kubernetes um, heavy lifting. And then, as you said, I have the the um, world in between and uh, well, I have to open a, a later one. Because of course I have. Um, the famous Ninja Cat now in there. <laughs> thanks to, to Martin Pankratz. Yes. Um, where I um, <clears throat> kind of highlight news from the, the, the world in between, which are mostly blogs that that come from from your team. Um, like like Martin, like you, um, like all the other guys who, who do something like that. And then I have also some learning and event stuff. So what's coming up? What what are interesting stuff with respect to where you can learn something which might not be necessarily connected to to anything up above. Mm -hmm. um, and also something that I called productivity and developer experience. I'm not super happy with that. So it's not about getting you work more um, in shorter time. It's more about making your life easier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and as I said, there is the um, the video part, so you can subscribe to um, my YouTube channel, and then you have a playlist with my news wrap. Yeah, um, you also see here this the schema uh, thingy um, that that I did. Yeah, and that's. That's what um, what my news rep is all about. Cool. So and but but you already said so. Actually, again, um, you, you mentioned you you had this on on YouTube. There's also a, a podcast and and actually, I mean, we're we're doing the same. We're just taking the audio from the from the YouTube videos and we um, publish it as an as an audio only podcast. And obviously, sometimes you lose a lot of things. But but actually, I heard from some listeners that. If there is something um, that they couldn't follow and it is interesting for them, then they go back to the video and 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 watch it. Yeah, that that's true. That's that's, but that's I think fair. You, yeah, yeah. And but I think you you made an announcement that going forward, I will need to look for another podcast for 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 my weekends because you you're um, basically transitioning to a new model, um, in yeah in season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I called it season two. Um, <clears throat> so um, I. I reflected a bit because I, I do those stuff in my in my spare time. So on yeah. Saturday. And it basically eats up uh, half of my Saturday. Um, with with. Doing the video, uh, doing all the publishing, um, yeah, yeah. getting the word out. And I I kind of reflected a bit and, and thought, is this um, effort really um, having that much that much ad advantage for the um, for the community? So leaving aside that you have not to look for another podcast, <laughs> but um, um, is this really um, something like I would digest that, that mm -hmm. stuff, uh, listening to somebody uh, for, for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, also, there are, there are chapters in YouTube and you can jump and so on. Isn't it that I would just go to the, to the, to the um, GitHub repository and check what's new? Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe jump into the video if there is something that I would like to hear about. And uh, besides that, I also that that kind of time was lacking when getting your hands dirty on yourself. So I, I yeah. talked a lot about cool stuff. And by talking about it, I could not try it out. And <laughs> that kind of, um, yeah. was something that I want to change. And as you can see here, we have season two out uh, with the first episode already. Mm -hmm. And there is now basically the one change is there is no more YouTube. There is no more a uh, podcast there. That's one mm -hmm. point. You still have all the, the links and information available within the, the site. Um, I even tried to give it a more text, a bit more text there. Um, so um, you will see all the all the stuff. I mean, that's that's the, the built edition. So that's quite lengthy. Now, oh, as you can Microsoft. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as you can see here, uh, there is some some additional uh, strangely looking information. And what I did is also um, motivated by by a regular listener of uh, my news rep. Um, I generate also the same stuff on DevTO. So if you prefer to read the stuff on DevTO, you can just do that. 
Mm -hmm. And it's it's basically the same. Um, and I I do not have to spend any thought about that because what I do is I use a GitHub action for that. Cool. So I, I leverage the, um, as you can see here, um, I leverage here just just an action that just pushes it um, to uh, to DevTO, um, making use of the DevTO API. So that's that's and that's not too much work from the from the action perspective. So that's what I like. So you you I, I have it on a push and um, I just um, call a little script, mm -hmm. um, which you can see here, and then I do. Um, the commit again, which updates the uh, metadata so that I have the link within my um, within the episode. Really cool. And I think um, when when Martin created um, the Ninja Cat page where we have all the content, I think there that was another area where you really helped and contributed or did a lot of stuff to to help us get the GitHub Actions in place so that we could also publish it. So. I can clearly see your passion and knowledge in, in this area. So it's fantastic to see that you're using this here also for the Dev.2. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really um yeah, I really like that. And and that's if if the person would not have uh, called up for that, um I wouldn't have done it. But then I thought, hey, uh, that's another chance to get my hands dirty with uh, GitHub Actions, and I, I like to do that. Perfect. So that, that's a kind of the story around my news rep and what's what's happening there. So now, the good thing is really um, it's still there. We can just uh, we don't have an audio, but we can still go to dev.2 or, or also to your GitHub repo and find all the links in a very curated form. So I'll, yeah. I'll definitely continue to do this. Yeah, so so absolutely. So you can either um, um, follow the um, the GitHub repository, you can follow the blog uh, post on, on DevTO. So it's a series, as you can see here. So I, I have it all running on the, the series title. Um, you can do that. Um, follow me on Twitter because I will tweet on, on Saturday when it's out. So you, mm -hmm. you have a fair chance not to miss it if you <laughs> don't want to miss it. Um, yeah, and with that, I have more time to make my hands dirty with stuff and that um, yeah, already started. Um, so I will have something that I called quick launch because I didn't come up with something clever, um, which are more or less short videos on on topics where I stumble across, and that's really mm -hmm. um, now all over the place. So um, as you can see here, it's about the VS Code Azure tool extension that got updated recently yeah. at build, if I remember correctly, or shortly before build. And if you open it the first time, like I did, I thought it's broken <laughs> because it's it's that cleaned up that um, you miss a lot of things. And that should uh, give you kind of an, a quick start. And I also made a video on the BTP Setup Automator, another cool project um, by Rui Nuguera that Ooh. is available as open source on, on GitHub, which uh, should help you get things started. And I will continue with that. And maybe, maybe there will also be a third thing that might come up here within the playlists. Oh, OK. Uh, I'll, so I'll look forward to that. It, it might be connected with GitHub. Maybe. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool, so yeah. we will definitely watch this. So that's that's kind of the the past and future. Great. OK, um, good. Then let's take a look at Kima. Um, that's kind of the my 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 second um, area where where I love to to talk about where I love to to work with, and and bear with me I have some recycling of slides um, as you can see here maybe it's from the Dapper community call. Um, so for those of you who don't know uh, Kima Kima is an an open source software or an open source um, framework stack however you want to call it. Um, and it's defined like like written here. So it's um, I can enlarge it a bit. It's a, a cloud native application runtime that combines the power of Kubernetes with uh, best in class tools and open source components in order to basically make your life easier to to develop cloud native applications. Um, if you think about Kubernetes, 
it's super powerful. It's really great, but it's also hell of complex. Mm-hmm. And um, I think citing um, Kelsey Hightower, it's it's a platform to build platforms. It's mm-hmm. there as a starting point, but it's not the end game where you want to build your applications on top on a, on a naked uh, blank Kubernetes because you have to wrap your head around all the stuff that I, for example, do not like, like networking or something like that. Who, who likes that? Um, and think about how to to uh, make that that life easier. And Kima is one step forward to that. Now, Kima with its stack comes in an in an opinionated approach. So you, as you can see here, um, you have basically a lot of um, yeah standard tools like like uh, Loki, Prometheus. Um, uh, you have uh, Istio, of course, which which covers the service mesh. You have several components that are part of Kima um, and come with Kima, but are following the uh, Kubernetes architecture, so to say. So they are custom resources, and this already gives you kind of a head start in order to build your cloud native application, and of course, in order to build your cloud native um, extensions, like like depicted here. Mm-hmm. And it's not only open source, but it's also managed offering. So it's part of the SAP Business Technology Platform where you can um, get that as a managed offering. So you do not have to take care about Kubernetes. You do not have to take care about um, Kima with respect to, I would say, ops perspectives. Um, but you can use it in order to build um, cloud native applications and to combine SAP um, applications, also third party applications, um, and bring that together and build your business applications. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that and looking at the stack, there is already quite some cool stuff here, like Istio, like uh, you do not have to take care about Prometheus. Um, You have something in there, like like a very cool dashboard that I like a lot. Um, you have nuts in there for for in cluster eventing, but you still um, have a lot to do if you want to build applications. So there is still um, a way to go. And as I'm loving serverless, I love the Azure Functions programming model. Um, I I thought about can't we make the life a bit a bit easier for for a developer. Is there something that that we can do um, on on different aspects like developer experience, like um, plumbing together things and making things exchangeable, like um, when I connect to a to a state store, when I connect to a persistency, when I use eventing. Mm-hmm. Now, all that comes now is by no means an official statement of SAP. It's kind of what my brain thinks is a good idea, which might not be necessarily what um, others think is a good idea. Um, but customers or partners have the option to do that. Why? Because even in this managed offering, um, you have now full access to Kubernetes. Mm-hmm. And when I say now, since the beginning of this year, so there was a bigger update within Kima. Um, before that, you you basically could not do too much within Kima, so you could use all the components that were there, but you could not install your own components. Um, so you were to some extent um, well limited in what you could do. And now I thought of, well, two things. Um, why not bring in a custom component? And why not bring in Azure Functions? Because we can. Um, and that's what I did. So um, it's really a, a very basic uh, um, POC or however you want to call that, where I have um, Dapper as as component installed within Kima. Now Dapper is short for Distributed Application Runtime, um, which is a CNCF project that um, should help you with building microservices. So it delivers several building blocks for developing microservices like state management, um, actors, uh, um, um, eventing can be abstracted away and they provide those those building blocks and you just use the dapper api 
the Dapper mm -hmm. endpoints, which can be HTTP endpoints or gRPC endpoints. And what's hidden behind that? If this is a Redis store, if this is a, a, a Cosmos DB in order to store your state, if this is um, a MS SQL database or a S3 uh, a bucket, I'm not quite sure if that's supported for a state, but um, you get the idea. Um, you do not care as an application mm -hmm. developer as it should be. You have not to think about the specifics of, of Cosmos, of Redis, of I don't know what. You just want to store your state. And, and that's what you can do with Dapper. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's kind of one part of the story. You can combine that now with, with every um, workload that is capable of calling either a gRPC endpoint or an HTTP endpoint. So you can, I think, use a lot. Maybe Fortran is out of scope there. I'm not 100% sure, but I would guess. Um, but everything that can call uh, HTTP is, is, can use that. So you mm -hmm. can use the, the language that you like. Now, me as a developer, I don't want to think too much about how to, to wire things up. Um, I want to have some, some, I want to have my, my developer living room kind of as cozy as, as, uh, as possible. And I like Azure Functions. I think I said that already. Um, now there is, <laughs> there is one thing um, about Azure Functions that's not that well known. The Azure Function runtime is open source. It's under MIT license. And you can containerize your Azure Functions. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have played around with Azure Arc, you have already mm -hmm. seen that. Um, because you can deploy Azure Functions to um, a Kubernetes cluster that's on-premise via Azure Arc. That's possible. Um, but you can also do that yourself. So you can containerize your Azure Functions, deploy them to a Kubernetes cluster, and make use of the same programming model as if you would be within um, Azure. Okay. Of course, uh, you do not have the, the scaling, um, yeah, out sure. of the box um, and all that, but from a programming perspective, completely the same. Cool. So, um, yeah, what did I do there? Um, let let us take a short look at the code, and I think I have to enlarge that a bit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so, um, all the code is available within um, GitHub. So you can uh, just go to uh, SAP samples. Mm -hmm. And there you have the Kima runtime extension samples, and there you find the custom component Dapper. Mm -hmm. And um, there you have everything in there, including uh, a dev container and, and so funny things like that. And um, yeah, what you see here is basically this, this package. And if you are coming from the, um, Azure Functions world, basically that's what an Azure Function looks look like. So you have one configuration, um, which tells you what's what's the binding. Uh, so so how can you trigger the function? Um, how, what can the function have as an output? So here we return an HTTP um, result. We are triggered by an HTTP request. Um, we can configure which mm -hmm. which HTTP methods are supported. We can define the routing and so on. Um, and on the other side, you have the uh, the code, which um, looks like this. So you have a little bit of, of plumbing, uh, bringing in all the information around Dapper. And then you can just use the usual Azure function, as you can see here, um, programming model in order to interact with Dapper. Um, that's kind of the, the manual way. There is also something like a binding for a Dapper, but I'm not 100% sure if that's still really supported. Um, so that's that's why I use that one for demos. And what you can do then is wrap that up into um, into a container, and that's not not very difficult. So um, there are base images that are provided by by Microsoft. For example, here I take the the Node 16. Um, base image for Azure Functions. And then I set some environment variables, which are, to be honest, I wouldn't call it black magic, but very hard to find. Okay. 
Um, so that's that's not perfectly documented um, to to say the the best. So you really have to look into the the code of the um, Azure Core runtime to find all those. Um, what it does is there is some some basic uh, homepage that uh, set, tells you um, that the the Azure Functions runtime is running. You can switch that on or off. You have to define with ASP.NET Core underscore URLs on which port you are exposing your um, your functionality, and then well you copy your stuff and run it. That's it. So that's that's all the magic. Now. Um, with the Azure Function CLI, you can already create such a Docker file, but you will only get the basically the from the very first env, I think also the second one, and then those copy and run stuff. If you want to get a bit more um, things, you can also use a little CLI that I created, um, which gives you a bit of more degrees of freedom, like um, which images you you want to use, also which which Docker base image you want to use. If you want to disable the Funk home page, the default port. Um, if you want to also get the the Kubernetes files uh, like the deployment YAML and so on. So that's all in there. Um, if you you want to try it out. Yeah, and then you deploy it to to Kubernetes, and that's also no no rocket science there. It's it's a usual. Um, Deployment files. So for those of you who are working with Kubernetes, there is no surprise for you in there. So it's it's really a classical deployment. Um, what you have to do because you have Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes, you have Dapper running within your cluster. You have to put in some annotations to tell Dapper, hey, this deployment, please um, watch that one, inject the so-called sidecar, so a little container on the side of the workload, and um, do whatever this container wants to do from you. So like um, calling a state store. And the rest is um, usual, usual Kubernetes um, code or, or configuration. Mm -hmm. um, in order to let Dapper know that this is the app, that's the annotation for that. And in order to let Dapper know um, what components are in there, so those building blocks that I mentioned before, state store, actor, um, um, persistency. You have to um, define a component which basically tells Stepper that's the state store. Use the state store that I have also deployed within my uh, Kubernetes cluster. And yeah, checking the, the picture once again. So um, we have now a function that we could deploy. We have told Dapper that this function should be uh, capable of interacting with Dapper. We have the, the ready state store that we use for, for state management, and we have to, to link everything together in order to get things running. And then we have an app that's running. And um, from a business perspective, it's a super complex business scenario. Uh, you have an API that is basically a wish list. So you can post wishes to the state store, and you can um, fetch the wishes again, and there is a business. Uh, Business logic in there that only allows you to put in three wishes. Perfect. So um, that's that's kind of the thing. And um, let's have a short look. I would say. So um, this is Here now on the business technology platform. Now I'm on. So this was the business technology platform. Yeah. So on on the sub account level, and now I'm on um, on mm -hmm. Kima. So this is this uh, Kima dashboard that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. That is really a, a cool thing. A really powerful. And here, as you see, we have the, the so-called namespaces, so the structuring of Kubernetes into different areas, so a logical grouping of, of artifacts. And here we have um, Dapper installed. Um, we can take a look at a dashboard that comes out of the box with Dapper that tells us what's, um, what's the version, if it's healthy, what applications do we have in, in Dapper. Um, we can also check which components are in there. So as you can see here, it's a state store that we have. And um, that's that's one thing. And the other thing is the um, Depper sample, where um, I have deployed 
my wishlist app. Mm -hmm. And taking a look at that one, you will now see that this, this pod, so this unit uh, that, that does all the work, um, contains, of course, this, this service mesh, Istio. It contains our app and it contains this Dapper sidecar. So this this additional container that um, intercepts the traffic from the app and routes it to the state store, for example. And with that, we can give it a try, I would say. So what I use now is the um, is a little extension in in um, uh, VS Code the REST client, and I have uh, done here my my um, endpoint. And now I have within the function, as you have seen, I have three um, three functions in here. Mm -hmm. So one for the management, one for listing uh, the wishes, and one for um, getting the wishes wishes back. Mm -hmm. And I have already prepared something to to honor the host of this show. Um, so let's see if Holger has something on his uh, list. And there uh, are no, no wishes, wishes yet. yet. So um, first things first. So um, an Xbox Series X. So that was the first item. Um, I don't know. Surface Studio, always good to work with. Um, let's put that one in. OK, that was added. Now let's see if that's all on the list. OK, there are two things already on there. Um, nice. Yep. I don't know. Um, what shall we put on? Uh, Stool 2. Um, let's just write it the right way. OK, and let's let's add another one because it's always good to have two. Huh? Ah, okay. No, yes. No more than three wishes. Um, and as you can see here, um, it's working and it's it's just using this ready store, but from a coding perspective, it doesn't know about the ready store. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we if we put that message in and if you take a look at the code, let's clean up a bit. Um you see here a number of wishes after adding. Um what it does, it just fills this this um, array with the with the wish lists uh, with the wishes, and then says to the Dapper client, "Hey, save this state." That's what I, from from a um, developer perspective, that's what I want to do. I want to save the state. I don't want to know if Redis has this endpoint or that endpoint, uh, how it would like its its data. I just want to store key value pairs, and um, I want not to care if somebody thinks that Cosmos DB is then a better way to store that stuff to adjust my my code and I can do that. Yeah, so with that, as you have seen, you can combine Kima on SAP BTP with a CNCF component, which is Dapper, with the programming model of Azure Functions, which are also available as open source, and um, combine all that stuff. So. You can now, you would now even be able to migrate that back to Azure or bring that again to Kima and so on. So that there are a lot of, of ways to, to play around with that stuff. So that's um, from my perspective really cool. And that's what I like about combining those two, two, two worlds. And as I said, that's nothing that's officially supported by, by SAP. So mm -hmm. that's just my, my funny brain making funny <laughs> thoughts and, and bringing that into life. Um, but, but you can do that also. So there was no, um, no magic that I had to do within my Kima cluster, for example. You can do that. That's all um, possible, and not no, no dirty hacks or something like that. You know, that that was really cool, Christian. And I I I think you you showed so many things. And and let let me just pick a few. Um, and let let me start with the Depper thing. I think that was really interesting with with all the abstractions that we have. So you you mentioned when you do your Azure Functions development, you just say store this state, and you don't care where the data is actually stored, which also means this is a beautiful abstraction layer. So potentially yep. if you write an application, as you said, one, someone likes, prefers Cosmos DB as a data store. Another one um, prefers um, um, Postgres as, as the data store. And you can probably easily migrate your application then from this one uses Cosmos. This is this one is, is using Postgres. So I think that is a yep. beautiful way of, of um, using Depper as, as the abstraction layer 
for yep. the for the underlying infrastructure. And also for grow as you go. So may yeah. maybe Redis yeah. is good for starting things, but at some point in time you're successful. Um, and and you have to to have some more powerful thingy in the back end, and maybe then Cosmos DB might be the better choice. You can do that. Is there actually a an, a HANA connector for Depper? So <laughs> could I use HANA? That, for... That's that's funny because exactly the same question was asked in the Depper community call, and no, unfortunately, there is not. Okay, well, so maybe there we'll is some. There is no no uptake, but in the in the community call, there was one one colleague of you from Microsoft. Who said, "Hey, there is a there is a, a Hana SDK in Go, so that would really be feasible." But then I said, "Yeah, <laughs> maybe." <laughs> okay, so so this is definitely one thing to to look into. Um, the 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 other thing um that obviously this whole containerization um honestly I mean I I heard thanks to you I had heard already that um Azure Functions can be containerized. For me, Azure Function was always bound very much to Azure, to the Azure Cloud, obviously, and yes, to, to maybe to Azure Arc. But I wasn't aware before you you told me that um, it can really also run in, in a container and that it is actually um, open source as part of the MIT license, which I found was was really, really interesting. Um, obviously, this gives a lot of new um, scenarios. As you said, maybe I as a developer, I really want to develop locally because I have a bad internet connection or whatever, and I, I cannot connect to Azure. That is one thing. Maybe if I'm um, affected by some regulatory industry, maybe some privacy concerns. Maybe there's this famous um, "I'm on a on a world cruise ship" scenario where we have very limited internet connectivity. So, so th there are a lot of cases where if you say Azure Function is great, I, I love the, the the whole functionalities, but I cannot use it for use it for whatever reason. Then in this scenario that you showed, it's it's really beautiful to to know that you can containerize it, that you can take it offline and, and, and use it really um, decoupled from, from Azure. So that, that's also really, really cool. And you can now, in the meantime, even go one step further, you can also do durable functions um, in Kubernetes, kind of, mm -hmm. um, by, by leveraging a new storage backend, which is MSSQL based. Um, so what it means, picking up the cruise ship example, um, you can model workflows with Azure Functions with the with the with the durable functions, which is super cool. Um, and you need some 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 state store again in between, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, the the durable task framework by Microsoft. And you can now attach MS SQL as that. It was before just the Azure storage, mm -hmm. which you cannot deploy to Kubernetes, but now it's MS SQL, so what cool, something stuff. that you can run there. And there is also a proposal within Dapper to bring in a Dapper component that is based on the durable task framework. That's, I think two weeks ago or something like that, um, which might also be super cool from my perspective. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure um, in the future, if, if there are some some cool enhancements, we'll read it in um, the My News Rep, or, or maybe we'll Absolutely. have some, some of these um, quick glance videos um, where, where you highlight um, stuff like that, so so I think that's uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, happy happy to to provide those stuff and be assured I I will definitely collect the news um, within my news trip also in the future. Great. Well, Christian, um, thank you so much for for joining um, our SAP on Azure video podcast. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to following um, all the content um, on on GitHub. And who knows, maybe one of my three wishes, um, maybe I'll get a Duo 2 or a Series X <laughs> and then then uh, we can meet again. Well, well we can also meet um, if I don't get my wishes fulfilled. Yeah, I, I don't guarantee on that. So, sorry. <laughs> well, okay, great. Um, thank you so much. Um, I would be really happy to to have you back on the show. Um, maybe then also with Robert and Goran when they're here. Um, to to hear some some new stuff in the world of um, in the twilight zone of of SAP and Microsoft. Yeah, happy happy to do that. And uh, again, thanks a lot for for having the the opportunity to show some stuff here. Thank you, Christian. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.